So I'd like to talk a little bit more about what's going on in the brain so you understand exactly what's happening when we're transforming blocks to love. So there's a really great model for your brain that's right here in your hand. And I believe you'll remember it better if you do it with me. So I invite you to put a hand in front of yourself. This will be your spine here. Right about here would be your brain stem. It's the oldest part of the brain, also known as the reptilian brain. It's the part of the brain that makes sure the heart's pumping and that we're breathing. It's also involved in fight, flight, or freeze. Then we have the thumb, which represents the limbic system. The limbic system has the amygdala and the hippocampus and a few other parts. So, this is the part of the brain that's wanting to know that we're safe and that we matter, that's remembering things explicitly and implicitly. And then we have the cortex. Cortex is the outer bark of the brain. It does the higher level thinking, higher level behaviors. And the part that I'm really interested in for our discussion tonight is the middle prefrontal cortex, the two middle fingernails. This part of the brain is a very important part of the brain for relationships. It has the capacity for empathy and for insight. It has the capacity to soothe fear and regulate emotions. It has a sense of morality. It has that, it's, when you're pausing and thinking what's the best thing to say right now, should I tell him he's an idiot? No. <laughs> That's your mental prefrontal cortex. <laughs> Is this a good time to throw my glass at the wall? <laughs> That's you like, I'm clinging on to my mental prefrontal cortex here, but my amygdala really wants to take over. <laughs> when the amygdala takes over, we flip our lid. Okay. Now, of course, the brain doesn't actually do that, although I think it would be really cool if it did. Because then they'd be really clear. All right, this person's, this person's gone. This person needs a lot of empathy. What this represents is that we've lost the neural connections between the mental prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Uh-oh. So when we're arguing, we've got two brains like this. Going, I really need you to understand this point, but you haven't understood this point yet. But if you don't understand this point, you won't need to understand that point. Because my point's right and yours is wrong. Nobody's helping each other to soothe and bring the prefrontal cortexes online. When we do empathy, we, we put a foot back in the middle prefrontal cortex and we start to relax. And, and the middle prefrontal cortex signals, signals another part of the brain to release some GABA and oxytocin, which is like a, a body lotion for the amygdala. It's like bubble bath. And the amygdala goes, oh, oh. And What is it that the amygdala longs for? To be understood. To be deeply understood. It enjoys, you know, consoling and reassurance and those kinds of things, but what it really longs for is to be deeply understood. And this is why the practice of nonviolent communication can be so powerful. Because the practice of empathy in nonviolent communication, when it's done well, when it's resonant empathy and somatic based, we can do beautiful healing work for the amygdala. So when we're transforming a block to love, what we're doing is taking that neural network that still thinks that the past is true. We're giving it the empathy we need so that the prefrontal cortex can soothe it and so that the hippocampus can come online and put everything in its right place. The hippocampus is like the librarian and the autobiographer of the brain. It's the part that goes, no, no, Eric, that was in the past. You were little then. You're big now. You can take care of yourself. You're not responsible for others. The amygdala doesn't know those things. <clears throat> so there's our amygdala. That's one. We have two, one in each hemisphere. And what I'm talking about tonight is mostly the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere of the brain is the part of the brain that is in charge of bigger emotions, more intense feeling emotions. 
The left hemisphere is the part of the brain that we're do, using mostly in our day-to-day -day lives, getting things done, linear thinking, completing tasks, figuring things out. But when we have more intense experience with bigger emotion over the right hemisphere, that's not the only time, but that's one of the things that the right hemisphere does, is it tries to regulate bigger emotions. And that's where we need these neural pathways between, this is the middle prefrontal cortex, and this is the hippocampus. This brown thing represents the cortex of the brain. The amygdala is the driver of the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve has three pathways. One of them is fight flight, one of them is freeze, and one of them is social engagement. Hopefully the one that you're in right now. The social engagement pathway is the one where you feel pretty safe and relaxed, sense that you, it's okay to be here, you belong, and that kind of thing. When the amygdala perceives that danger, it shifts us away from social engagement towards fight, flight, or freeze. Freeze goes all the way down towards the belly, social engagement, and fight, flight just goes as far as the heart. When you're feeling, and here you can see it branches out, when you're feeling that tension in the gut, or the constriction in the chest, tension in the neck and the jaw, that's a sign that you're going into fight flight. So we're not either here or here. We can be here or here. We're often fluctuating back and forth, depending on what's happening. You can be a little bit in social engagement, a little bit in fight flight. I used to operate a lot out of phrase kind of being a little bit cut off and numb to what's going on. And I think we live more and more in a world that makes it hard to actually be fully in social engagement, fully relaxed and feeling safe and connected. So the challenging thing is that the amygdala is very fast. Its job is to keep us alive and safe. So it acts in milliseconds, 14 milliseconds, and it's activating fight, flight, or freeze. But the sooner we catch it, the sooner we can soothe it with the prefrontal cortex. How do we soothe it? We slow down, we, we put our attention in the body. We calm the brain by putting attention in the body. So here's a phrase you can take away and start using that I am confident will help you and others in your life to start being more in social engagement and help you when things get activated. Can I see if I'm understanding you? The amygdala wants to say, hey, this is what you need to understand about me. Hey, you're right, you're wrong, I'm right, and all of those kinds of language. That's amygdala talking. If you can remember to say, can I see if I'm understanding you? Or to yourself, when you notice that you're really activated, you can say to yourself, hey, can I see if I'm understanding me? And that means, what are the sensations going on? Wow, am I ever holding my gut? I'm hardly breathing. My shoulders are around my ears. What emotions there? Oh, it's anxiety. Or anger or sadness. And what are my needs? Am I needing trust? Am I needing respect? Do I need support? There's a, a doctor named Robert Benton, I think, out of the University of Massachusetts who does, who's done research and he has people meditate on needs words. He doesn't call them needs words, but they're, he calls them justice words or value words. Value. Same thing. And he, he can show how we relax the amygdala by focusing on these kinds of words. Which is research I've been waiting to see for quite a while. Because that's what my experience is with my nonviolent communication practice. When I slow down and pay attention to my body, pay attention to my needs, I always get calmer. If I don't, then I reach out to an empathy buddy who can help me move through the trigger that's too big for me to handle in that moment. 
So this is the value of putting our attention on feelings and needs. It really helps the amygdala to relax. Every time we do that, we strengthen our self-soothing neural pathways. And we get a wider window of tolerance for emotion and intensity of experience. What I mean by a wider window of tolerance, we, it takes us longer to shift into fight, flight, or freeze. The amygdala can hold more intensity before it says, okay, this is too much, I'm going into fight, flight, or freeze. 